Hey everyone, welcome to 2020. This is going to be the state of the channel address. Basically what it is, is it's a chance for me, the creator, to talk to you, the audience, in a fashion where it's a little bit more informal and I present to you almost like you're the board with a stake in the company, uh, where I tell you, you know, retrospectively what's happened since the last one of these updates, uh, what the future goals are, and then feedback. What it allows me to do is basically um, tell you kind of what's been going on behind the scenes, allow us both to kind of talk about the future and do course corrections with some feedback. Uh, so I think it's an important thing that I want to bring back uh, more often. So let's go ahead and get started. You can jump from the retrospective that we're going to be covering right now to the future goals and the feedback as needed, but if not, let's just go ahead and proceed in chronological order. So the first thing, the retrospective, is going to be taking a look at our growth between now and that previous um, state of the channel address. So the last one was actually like a year and a half ago, back in 2018. And what we did is we celebrated reaching 300,000 subscribers, set goals for expanding on that, and I have to say we far exceeded that. We're now over 600,000, heading towards 700,000, so more than doubled from where we were last time in just over a year. So that is awesome. Uh, view counts are up, watch time is up. So overall, you know, just generic channel trends, uh, things are looking good. Uh, I did pull up a graph that I created a little bit more to give you some nuance and how things have been shaping up. So basically since the last time we ran the state of the channel address, I've gone full-time YouTube. You'll see that by that dotted line. And then the chart itself basically goes month by month and shows you the numbers of videos and then the color is the type of video. So the main thing I wanted to show here is that, you know, previously when I was doing a full-time job building building solar power plants and doing YouTube on the side, we were averaging between you know two to maybe four videos a month at the max end. Uh, and then once I did full-time YouTube, we could ramp up production. And now what we're seeing is an explosion, you know, triple, quadruple that. Uh, our max here seems to be 11 videos in a single month, which is awesome. That's like two or three videos a week which I'm very excited about. I'm hoping to see more of that. Another thing that you can kind of get out of this is the fact that when you look at the colors, previously we had, you know, sp you know, it was sporadic cases of moments here, then another couple months moments. Same thing with how they did it, it would jump. Whereas as we start to go full time and I can increase production, uh, you start to get more consistency in terms of moments come out every month. Same thing with how they did it, trying to uh, do not only more quantity overall, but more quantity of, you know, the specific series. So that's kind of the way we're trending. Uh, and we'll talk a bit more about this in a little more depth in the slides to come. This next one here is basically new topics. So with the increased volume of videos, we've been able to expand what we cover. Uh, just the main ones that we've touched on here is going to be the Aztecs, Chinese history, U.S. naval history, uh, war gaming. All of these have performed really well. And what I've been trying to do this past year with going full-time YouTube is to just try new things. I think each of these has been a success. To comment on them somewhat separately, Aztecs has done well, U.S. naval history has done well, uh, war gaming has been kind of a niche thing, but still has pretty good interest because a lot of you are, are gamers or tabletop gamers. There's a lot of synergy with history. Uh, Chinese history for me hasn't performed so well. I'll continue to do some more episodes, but uh, that one is a little bit of swing and a miss. Uh, but the Aztecs I do hope to revisit. U.S. Naval history I'll probably be revisiting. Um, so yeah, just branching out, trying new topics. And that's what going full time has allowed me to do is try new things. Uh, another thing we've been able to do here is new formats. Uh, so just real briefly, we'll run through these. The major new formats are location shoots, interviews, reviews, and current events. These are all very exciting. It's things that I couldn't necessarily do previously when I was doing it part-time. Going YouTube full-time has meant, again, I've been able to experiment, try new things, see what works and doesn't work. And I have to say across the board, I think these all work. Location shoots for me is perhaps the most exciting of all these because what it means is in my videos, I try and bring out the color of history, the humanity of history, make it seem alive and real. Uh, and not just something that's dull. And to me, the location shoots pair very nicely with that philosophy. As proof of concepts, I was able to visit an actual World War II aircraft carrier that served during the Cold War, filmed there, shot a lot of stuff, got a lot of great feedback. You guys really enjoyed that. I was also able to go visit the US Naval War College and film on location. And uh, that kind of pairs nicely with the next part, which is, okay, I'm doing location shoots. I can also shoot interviews. And that's what we did. We integrated actually some interviews with historian Craig Simons to do our Battle of Midway video. I think that one is really trending very, very well. It seems like it'll hit probably in the next couple of months, maybe a million views. So that's really solid. I do hope to do more of those. And again, the idea of going full-time YouTube and doing this kind of early stage stuff last year uh, or this past year was to test, see what's possible, see what works and doesn't work. 
So location shoots work, interviews work. I really like the Craig Simons thing. I'd love to find more historians, find a pool of historians, go out and visit them and use them either as the backbone of a video upon which I throw narrations or have them as, you know, I'm doing my narration and then we call in an expert for a scene or a couple scenes or ex expertise on, on little subjects like that. So I think that was awesome. So that's one flavor of interviews. The second is to pull on historians and have them come on virtually, either through Skype calls or whatever it is, uh, and have them just talk to us, do an open format Q&A session. And that's been really good. We've had a running series where we go into Assassin's Creed Discovery mode, poke around the game version of history and have a historian talk to us and it's a guided tour. And I think that's been really successful. I'd like to do more of those and maybe try and see what different formats we can pull. But that has been very exciting. Uh, other formats have been reviews, talking about movies or critiquing or somehow playing off of modern media. I think that's been successful. The movie review, so-so, but kind of the critiquing and nitpicking and playing off of pop hit, pop culture and history uh, has been beneficial. So for instance here, improved battle plans on the, uh, the last season of Game of Thrones. Uh, I'd like to do more of that, maybe in the vein of improved battle plans, but maybe other tacks where I see a TV show has come out on various subjects and I can comment on it or perhaps provide uh, context for it. Uh, so I think that is something that you'll be seeing me do more of. And the last thing is like current events. So there's a lot of stuff that'll just happen um, that has some historical roots to it. For instance, Notre Dame last year had burned, suffered damage, and so I did like an emergency video which was, hey, what's the history of Notre Dame? What's at stake here? Same thing with the protests uh, and all that's going on with Hong Kong. We did a two-part history of Hong Kong. I'd like to be able to do more of that, but all of this kind of requires me to be able to do YouTube full-time to have more you know, capacity pr to produce videos so that we can do each of these. But I'm starting to reach already the breaking point where I can't myself cover all of these. So what this means is kind of moving forward into 2020, I'm going to be looking to bring on more help to do these, um, you know, to handle the workload. Uh, so how does that work? I wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight on what it's like to kind of start a YouTube channel or at least go full time. So here's what I'm looking at, uh, partly in 2019 and also in 2020. So the first thing was setting a foundation. I needed the time off from full-time work to be able to do this. Uh, and what that means is, well, the legal foundation for Invicta, that means officially incorporating, it means filing for copyright, it means getting contracts in place so that I get um, you know, protection for myself, stuff is formalized between myself and the contractors, uh, I get legal ownership over what is produced so that I can use it and license it and blah, blah, blah. Legal foundation, you get it. Uh, the other thing is the financial find it, foundation, setting up a bank account, accounting software, getting an accountant, getting ready to file taxes, getting an invoicing system, and all of that. So I needed that foundation to start basically, you know, your, your typical small business. Uh, and once that was set, then it was the uh, ramping up of production, so planning and getting help on the planning side of things, using things like Trello to just be able to to manage uh, multiple videos, stuff uh, that's going on behind the scenes. I needed to invest in that. I have it up and running. We have a pipeline now where I have basically a lot of research in parallel going on, which I can then once, you know, that a lot of research is going on, then that gets funneled down into research is done, then script writing, then art, then finally editing. So I have a lot of stuff kind of building up over time. And I spent a lot of 2019 building up research. So even though we had a lot more videos, I have way more research that's already been conducted conducted or is underway. So I think that was a big benefit of 2019, getting me ready for 2020. And I'm looking to build upon that project pipeline. The way that works is getting help, the second point. So that means hire on, hiring on contractors, hiring a production company, and I actually secured one that I'm very happy with, and they're gonna be helping to handle editing. So normally, like I said, that pipeline all gets choke pointed through me as the sole editor. I needed another editor who I could trust and who has a lot of experience with history and graphics and, and things like that. So I found a company, uh, they are onboarding right now and they're gonna be coming in in 2020. So now we're gonna have two editing pipelines, which I think is gonna bear a lot of fruit. Um, on the back of that, basically what happens is, okay, now we're producing all these videos. I need to turn that into a living. So that turns to this next part, which is, you know, my expenses, I have to figure out, you know, my overhead, keeping the lights on, my labor costs in terms of like operating expenses and all of that. And it adds up to be the case that for like my mid or high end videos, it's like a thousand to three thousand, maybe even more uh, money per video. And if we're ramping up production to the point where we're doing multiple videos a week, let's say we're doing three videos a week and those are all going to be costing me, you know, three thousand, we're burning through almost ten thousand a week. So at that point, you know, it's still good content. I really want to do it, but I need to make it pay for itself. 
So what that means is, okay, now that we're ramping up production, I need to pay for it. Um, so how does that work? Well, if you look at this um, pie chart at the bottom, it shows kind of what my sources of income are in kind of the tail end of 2019. And basically half of it is from YouTube, but I've had to supplement YouTube by getting additional sources of income, Patreon and sponsor. So that's why you see sponsored videos uh, on YouTube so much is because typically you're gonna see the cost of production that I quoted to you and YouTube is just not gonna cut it. That's why we're making it, we're more than you know, doubling our YouTube income by doing things like Patreon, by doing things like sponsors. To get sponsors, I then have to have a marketing team which can go out and get deals, negotiate them, get the rates, book them, invoice them, uh, do all this kinds of stuff. So you're starting to see it's a lot of small business stuff which has been a lot of what 2019 for me has been about finding out how that works, making it work, and that's kind of how we're gonna be heading into 2020. So I think we've set it up real nicely and now we're gonna be able to knock it out of the park hopefully. So what does that mean for future goals? Well, my future goals are, yes, ramp it up. But one of the things that was not really great for me at the end of 2019 in terms of ramp up is if you look at that chart, basically, yes, we had more videos, but it was not very consistent, both in terms of the videos per month, uh, but then also the types of videos. So for what I'm hoping uh, for 2020 is to be more consistent. So what that means is probably trying to release videos on a schedule. I have to announce this, but what I'm thinking about is doing something which is like, you know, two or three videos a week, probably going to be Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, regular video uploads. And that helps me just for my sanity, for planning, but then also use, you know, when to tune in. Uh, and then what we're hoping to do as well is of those video slots, start to move towards a series model. So what that means is instead of before where I would do kind of random topics of interest, what we're going to be doing is kind of trying to do series. So instead of choosing random kind of individual videos, we're going to be choosing larger themes. And then within those themes, we're going to try and build out a couple episodes that all tie together. The advantage of that is that it helps me in terms of planning, but also you have um, uh, economies of scale, basically, because now that I have multiple videos within the same theme, I can have uh, an artist who creates videos or that creates art for multiple videos, a researcher who gets in and does multiple videos. So for them, for the contractor, you can imagine they get more work, it drives down their rates, it means that they can reuse assets, it makes the whole process easier than a one-off. So that's kind of the, the, the business strategy behind it. For you guys, the benefit is gonna be that it's not gonna be as scatterbrained, we're hoping to see more content. Um, that is focused and the advantage additionally is that we're going to be able to have more community input so it's harder for you guys to suggest random videos because how am I going to run a poll on that that's just random videos it's easier for me to say hey these are the types of themes that I'm thinking about vote amongst those themes and then we can commit to those and any vote doesn't I don't have to keep voting because it's random videos it's voting and then okay that means five or six videos to me that means okay that's a month or two's work so it starts to get you know we're laying the tracks more in advance as opposed to laying the track right in front of us and trying to move um, so that that to me is the real benefit and so for you guys uh, check the description below I'll be linking to the first of probably many polls where I try and see uh, you know what themes are we going to pursue so that's the exciting stuff now, future goals specifically, what are we looking at? So for how they did it, it seems to be that we're gonna be pursuing certain themes. Uh, one of them is gonna be elections in ancient Rome, just because there's the elections coming up in the US and it's gonna be relevant. Uh, you guys had also expressed interest, interest for me to do stuff on law and order. So that means, uh, what was it like to police Rome? Did they have jails? How did security, you know, in terms of like gangs or raids, how did all that work in the provinces? So we're working on that. Natural disasters would be interesting. Uh, seeing how the Romans dealt with fire because of the relevance of the fires in Australia and in previously in California and other places in the world. How did people do it in the past? So those are things we're thinking about, uh, but we'll be having more in the future. This is just a little taste of what we've started on. Uh, more moments episode, I'm going to be turning my attention to uh, Carthage, the rise of Carthage, Carthage's other wars. Uh, and then speaking of wars specifically, I had done a series in the past where we started this channel doing basically battles and campaigns. Battle of Cannae, uh, Battle of Ichnomis, looking at the, uh, the Jewish uprising and the siege of Jerusalem. Those are big kind of my blockbuster series that took a lot of work, um, but I've had to kind of push to the side because I just didn't have the time. But now, like I said, now that we're bringing on this other editing team and we can have things in parallel, I'm going to be doing more of the how they did it, more of the recurring uh, series like that. And I'm going to have these big blockbusters handled by this new company. And so they're working on that. 
Uh, we're going to be doing stuff on the Punic Wars, Trojan War, Peloponnesian War, and it's really nice to have a professional team that can do these big blockbusters in parallel uh, to what I'm doing. Uh, so that's going to be exciting. We also have a new series that I'm going to be trying to pilot called Units in History. It's a chance to basically look specifically at different, well, as the title says, units of history. So for instance, look at the Persian Immortals. Each episode is going to be dealing with a specific unit. You know, uh, where did they come from? What was their training like? What was their equipment like? What is their uh, track record, battle tactics, things like that. So a self-contained package about each individual unit. So I'm thinking of starting with the Spartan Royal Guard, the Immortals, switching to Roman Auxiliary Infantry. If we're doing stuff about Carthage in the Moment series and in the wars, maybe we'll do, you know, a tangential units of history on Carthaginian war elephants. We'll do Sacred Band. We'll do Numidian Cavalry, stuff like that. So it's, it's going to be a fun uh, little series to start to pilot. Now on to kind of the cool stuff. So I wanted to continue to experiment with new formats. One of them is going to be to pull in reenactors. We're working with some of these groups. So for instance, if we're going to do an episode on Roman auxiliary infantry, yes, we'll have kind of our standard animations and art for that episode, but I want to pair it with reenactors because there's groups who reenact all sorts of things. It'd be great to find a reenactment group that does that particular unit and show what the equipment uh, and the life looks like in, in real life. Uh, so that's, that's what we're looking at. I'm partnering with some reenactors. Uh, site visits as well, as well. I want to do more of those. So for instance, if we're doing stuff on the Punic Wars, I would love to be able to travel to the ancient ruins of Carthage itself, go to the new, nearby museum in Tunisia, and share some of that. So that's something I'm hoping to do, a little bit more travel and site location shoots. Uh, and then lastly, another cool thing that I want to Im implement is going to be uh, Dungeons & Dragons. I've recently taken on the mantle of being a dungeon master. It is tons of fun, the world building, the running, the sessions. And I think there's a lot of overlap between my knowledge of history, doing world building, crafting a D&D &D setting, and playing it out that I think you guys would appreciate. So it may be a little bit of like an odd fit for the channel, but I think there will actually be a lot of overlap. And it's just something that... You know, this channel is a business, but at the same time, I, I still have to have it be my passion output. And if I like D&D, I want to share that with you guys. So we'll find a way to incorporate it where it seems natural. We'll find ways to do, you know, the history of D&D, &D, which we kind of started to get into with the history of wargaming. We'll probably do stuff about, you know, how to use history to world build or how to use history to create a, a reasonable map. Uh, things like that. I think there's ways to do it. So that's cool stuff for 2020. I'm very excited. Uh, the goals are going to be um, basically to get to three videos a week, ideally, just increase our production, uh, to have a million subscribers, which I think we can definitely get, and then lastly, to to boost up that Patreon support up to a thousand a video. Like I said, that's kind of the low end of production costs for a video, so if we can at least meet that with Patreon, it means that I don't have to go ahead and find a sponsor and stick in an ad in the video. It makes for a more enjoyable uh, experience, so I'm hoping that you guys, if you like this kind of stuff that I'm talking about here, uh, if you guys could go in the description below and just check out our Patreon, even a donation of one, two, five dollars goes a long way. Um, and and yeah, that, that'll be awesome. It'll allow us to do a lot more of this cool stuff. Uh, and then lastly, I want to do, you know, more real life history uh, to set myself apart. So that means site visits, reenactors, historical um, location shoots, interviews, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, feedback, if you could let me know uh, in the comments below kind of what you think about what we should do moving forward, what we could change or do better on, um, you can put that in the comments below. I'll also be linking to our subreddit where I'm hoping to have more discussions in 2020 to kind of uh, crowdsource ideas, change topics, and, and do stuff like that. Uh, and I'll also have a, a link to the poll below where you can find out, uh, you know, what, how they did it themes am I thinking about, and then vote on which ones you would prefer. And that's that's something that I'm hoping to do on a recurring basis. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and this is going to be a very exciting 2020. I cannot wait. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.